Well, it's getting longer every day. You think I'm getting old? <laughs> no comment. Hey, keep your hands to yourself. My brother's a cop. I uh, think I lost the key. How could I be married to such a dumbhead for 186 years, huh? Just luck, I guess. <laughs> Dominic and Florence Denovio of Kedzie Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. Married just about forever. Getting along fine. Sure that tomorrow will be just like today and next year will be just like last year. For as long as they live. I am tired. I'm, I'm going to be asleep about three seconds after I hit the pillow. Is that something new? <laughs> the last hunk of pizza. Ruin me. I feel drugged. Oh, and tomorrow you'll be ten pounds heavier. Tomorrow. The wonder, and sometimes terror of life, is that we can only suppose what the next day, or the next hour, or the next moment will bring. Creating our own reality out of the immense unknown. We have built stone cities, laced the night with millions of electric lights. Yet even here, in just such a city, a man moves unknowingly toward the edge of a cliff that falls off forever. There's nothing that I could possibly tell you about this psychic occurrence that would prepare you for its fantastic end. Dumb. All right, Mr. Cyclone. Come on, on your dummy, friend. Oh, Are you snoring go. again? Like the loudest sawmill I ever heard. I'm sorry. <laughs> I always feel like such a rat when I have to wake you. When you get started... Dumb. Mm. Oh, my good boy. Wake up. Come on. Wake up, Doc. What happened? You had a nightmare. No. Oh, it's Lawrence, you. I wasn't <laughs> sleeping. I was lying here on my side, telling myself that next time I dozed off, I wasn't going to snore. And then, all of a sudden... Everything was changed. I wasn't here. I was someplace else. It was terrible. It couldn't have been very terrible. You were with Edna. Who? You tell me who. Edna? That's the name you yelled. Edna, help me. I don't know the Ednas. Cross your heart and hope to die. Oh, come on. Here I am, trying to make myself look at least like Cleopatra. All the time, you're dreaming about Edna. <laughs> Done. Done, baby. Done, baby. Come on, wake up. Something hit me. What are you talking about? I'm telling you. I can still feel it and the pressure. I don't know what it is. I'm calling Dr. Barnes. No. no. It, it's going away. I feel better. I still want him to be here. Get him out of bed. I'll be all right. The next time you tell that pizza guy you want everything on it but the kitchen sink, I'm going to hit you with the kitchen sink. Hey, uh, you got any bicarbonate of the soda? Hey, baby. What, you think I'm flipping my lid? Hey, did you see what they, uh, what they put in that pizza? Huh?
Florence. Well, if the thermometer is, I must be coming down with something. My head is so hot. It feels like I got ten hangovers all at once. Something is pushing me in. I can't drink enough water. your writing. Edna. I'm writing this to tell you if you don't find me in time that... Hey. Read the rest. It gets better. If you don't find me in time, I love you very much and only you. All jokes today, huh? I said it was your handwriting. Well, why would I write a crazy thing like that? It was on your night table. What, I thought right in my sleep or something? Well, how did it get there? I don't, I don't know how it got there. Well, I hope Edna's your type. Old and fat. Why did you do that? Why did you waste that water? Why did I grab you like that? What's wrong with me? I can't breathe. My head aches. I'm acting goofy. Before you go to work today, I want you to stop by Dr. Bond. I, I, I'm late already. Well, then after work, I'm going to call him and tell him to expect you. Look at the marks on your arm. I'll live. Oh, baby, <laughs> I'm sorry. Then you'll go see Dr. Barnes? Yeah, I'll see him. <sighs> I'm glad. Morning, Mr. Canario. Same as it always does. I never noticed how small it is in his. It's like a like a coffin. <sighs> you look like it was quite an evening, Mr. Denovio. Was it a celebration or something? Mr. Denovio? Let me out. Well, we got four more floors to go. Let me out. Oh, what is it? Let me out. Where have you been? Walking. All day? Had to stay in the fresh air. I ought to strangle you. You, you know how worried I've been? The office has been phoning you all day. I called Dr. Barnes. He said you hadn't shown up there. You look terrible. Do I am tired? Come on, lie down. Walking around in this cold, darling. With your collar open like that. Don't close it. It's freezing outside. Leave them open, Flora. You'll catch your death. Edna! Yes, darling. Now, some of the hands just passed by on the way to the Fairchild. Yes, I no, heard the yes. horses. I yes. Yeah, they baby. didn't hear me. Yes. yes. Edna? Yes, baby. Find me? Yes. Edna? Dr. Barnes? He's home now. Edna, I, I can't. Out, Edna, you... I... Yeah. 
Well, what's wrong? I don't know what's wrong. Here, pick this up at the drugstore. It'll help him sleep. Is that all you can do? Help him sleep? Are you sure he's getting plenty of water? He drinks gallons of it. Then why is he dehydrated? What's that? Well, that's what everybody in the desert gets. Why should he be like that? Well, it could be diabetes, but it isn't. And why is he so nervous? Have you and he been having any problems? Of course not. Well, what kind of an of course not is that? Dominic's like being married to a nice, gentle elephant. Except, who's Edna? Edna? That's the name he yelled. He wrote it down. In his sleep, he talks about horses and nobody finding him and... I don't know what else. Well, maybe he's leading a double life and is catching up with him. Now, he'll be okay. If I say he's picked up a fancy virus that's going around, will that make you feel better? He'll be fine. I'll drop in tomorrow. Oh, thank you, Dr. Barnes. What are you doing? The doctor said stay in bed. The walls are closing in. Where are you going? Oh, no. Dom! When are you coming down? It's past three o'clock. What's wrong with me? I, I'm out here in the open. I still feel cooped up. Maybe you're going through something emotional. Well, something's bothering you, something important. Like what? How should I know? You've only been living with each other for 19 years. Dumb. Is it about us? I mean me? What? You just don't pull a name out of a hat. And to save me, and to save me, and to oh, save come me. Come on. Save you from what? Me? Am I smothering you? Doctor, too long. You never felt helpless like this before. Specialist in the hospital, look at him. Radiologist, urologist, neurologist, cardiologist, and they can't seem to find a thing. It isn't uremia, it isn't shock, it isn't meningitis, it isn't. He's there. No. Here. Wait. We have our own brief. Father Martin. Father Martin isn't well. He Tell me, he'll be so scared. He won't even know the father is there. Oh, can't we just wait? Just a little while. I wouldn't wait, Florence. Oh. 
done. She taught me. How can a perfectly healthy man be dying of thirst and suffocation out of the Dutch economy? It's done. Asperger's knee, lemonade, silver, wonder ball, the pompous knee. There's a royal. Is there any May Davis? And I. Finally. Sicut erat in principio et nunc semper in secular secularum. Go down to the hog patch. Near the freight hall. Auditorium nostrum nomine domini. Had no finery. Finery. He's delirious. I haven't been able to give him confession, of course, but I've anointed him and given him conditional absolution. Father, I'm sorry I lost my temper like that. I understand. Father Martin didn't tell me that your husband was from the West. He isn't. Well, he must be. Why do you say that, Father? Well, I studied at a seminary in Arizona. I haven't heard cowhan words like Arroyo and Hog Camp and Freight Hole in a long time. Also, his accent's pure Western. Dominic's never been west of Chicago. His voice has been sounding different. I mean, changing. I never thought anything about it. I thought it was his sickness. Oh, look, I, I know him most of my life. He's from Rockport, Illinois. He's been maybe to Detroit and Cleveland. And that's all. some work for I see him. How's the ambulance chasing this? See him, I, I can't hold up much longer. I, Frederick Gibbs, being a sound mind and body, do hereby give all my worldly possession. I am too tired this baloney, I want to give it all to Edna anyway. Boy, you sound so different. What are some of the things he wrote or said? Crazy things. Like what? I don't remember exactly. Well, try. <laughs> oh, about men passing on horses and nobody hearing him. And uh, why doesn't Edna look for him? Things like that. distance. Now listen to me and do what I tell you, and don't tell me it can't be done. See if there's a man in Reno, Nevada named Sam Harker or Harkness or something like that. Now, he might be a lawyer. That's all I know. That's all I know. Now, come on. Come out here, Sam. Isn't he back yet? No, he isn't back yet. A wanderer had not returned. Beginning not to care one way or another. Want a drink? No, thanks. Edna. Now, don't start pleading his case. He's done this 20 times before. He's like a two-year-old. Gets mad, goes wandering off, and three days pass without so much as a hail and farewell. Edna, you're going to think I'm going loco for sure. About 20 minutes ago, I got the craziest phone call. From home. From a doctor in Chicago. Are you said before that Fred got sore and went out walking? Hasn't stopped, apparently. Well, is there some place on the ranch where he could have fallen, like a, like an abandoned well? There's no abandoned well on our land. Well, it sounded crazy. Is it mine shaft? We were always going to find silver, but didn't. Could Fred have fallen in by accident? I don't know. We've talked about boarding it up. I suppose at night, if someone got careless, 
Edna, let's look there. But how could Fred... I don't know how, but let's look, huh? Dominic DeNovio of Chicago and Frederick Gibbs of Reno, Nevada are identical twins. Their mother died shortly after their birth and their father put them up for adoption when they were nine weeks old. And until the ordeal we have just dramatized, they knew absolutely nothing of each other's existence. Most scientists agree that nature intended identical twins to be a single individual. They retain such exact cell structure that kidneys, skin, other internal organs can be transplanted from one to the other with complete success. There is also undeniably a psychic link between identical twins. Professor H. H. Newman, in his treatise, Multiple Human Births, describes an example of identical twins whose minds were so attuned that even when placed in separate rooms, they could write identical answers to complicated questions using exactly the same grammar, making exactly the same mistakes, using exactly the same handwriting, and finishing at exactly the same moment. An even more curious example is reported by the French professor Léon Camoreux. A man in Italy was bitten by a rabid dog and died a month later. In America, his identical twin died at exactly the same moment, showing every symptom of rabies. Except nothing had bitten him. Uh, one last note. Everything that Dominic DeNovio wrote in his semi-conscious state in Chicago was also written by Frederick Gibbs in this notebook at the bottom of a mine shaft on a ranch outside Reno, Nevada. Now, to try to explain such an occurrence would be presumptuous. But whatever the phenomenon involved, Edna Gibbs and Florence DeNovio are awfully grateful for it.